Hey everybody, this is Sam Carey from the New Ed Tech Classroom. And in this video, I'm going to give you my top 10 favorite creative projects you can do with students. Creative projects are obviously something that you could do at the end of the year to finish the year off, but all the projects I'll show are also projects you could do at any point of your school year as well. One of the most important shifts we can help students make is to not just be consumers of technology, but to also learn how to create with technology. So stick around and I'll show you 10 ways that you can do that. One tip that's going to apply to all the projects and tools that I'm going to show is that you should give students some time to tinker in each of the programs and play around with the tools and figure things out for themselves. You don't personally need to be an expert with the programs that you use and you can even be open and honest with students and have them teach you about some of the different features and even start teaching the rest of the class. That might even help you get more buy-in. All right, the first project is to have students make a digital comic. And my favorite program for making digital comics is Storyboard That. You can use digital comics for students to summarize books using a plot diagram, to make timelines for character analysis, to show what they've learned about historical events, and more. And just so you know, Storyboard That does offer a free 14-day trial, but after that, you would have to pay for a subscription. You can use digital comics as a way to have students practice visualization skills, practice writing concise summaries, and also practice writing dialogue. If you're going to have students make digital comics before they actually get into Storyboard That, I'd recommend having students fill out a template first so you can give them feedback on the content of their work before they actually get into making their comics. Once students are in Storyboard That, they have options to bring in different characters and then customize the way those characters look, as well as the different poses of the characters. And then they can also do things like bring in different scenes, bring in objects, and even import images into their comics. So the end result is that every comic students make ends up looking pretty creative and unique. I have a full tutorial about making digital comics with Storyboard That that I'll put in the video description. And you can also get the template that I showed in the video description too. All right, number two is a basic video project. And one of my favorite programs for making beginner video projects with students is Canva. Videos are incredibly easy to make in Canva because they don't require any video editing skills, which is why I say that this is more of a beginner video project. Instead of using a layering system like more complex video editors, Canva just uses different slides that are animated to look like a video. Students can add different elements on each slide, such as text and images. Then they can easily change the animation style and color scheme, as well as add background music to their videos. In addition to images, students can also import actual video files and then add text on top of those too. So if you were doing a project where students were documenting something like say their science experiment, they could take a video on their phones and then upload it to Canva and then upload it to their video. Mixing images and videos produces a pretty cool effect that looks something like this. get a Canva for Education account for free and I've put a link to my Canva for Education tutorial for teachers in the video description if you want to learn more. My third creativity project is an ebook or digital book with Book Creator. Just like basic videos and digital comics, you can use digital books to have students show their understanding across pretty much any grade level and any subject area. With Book Creator, you can access one library and 40 books for free. And after that, Book Creator does cost $10 a month to use. If you don't wanna pay though, you can also archive your old library to be able to open up a new one. Book Creator has a library of digital books you can show to your students to help inspire them for their creations. When you show these to students, you'll also want to point out that digital books are different from regular print books because you can embed multimedia in them, like video and audio files. When you have students make digital books, you'll also want to talk with them about the importance of presentation as a creativity skill. The content of their book might be amazing, but if it's poorly presented, it's probably going to be poorly received. That's an important life lesson. 
So use this as an opportunity to teach students about font families and color schemes. And if you don't personally know a lot about those topics, then you can go out and find plenty of resources online that you can share with your students. I'd also recommend that you show them all the different multimedia tools and emphasize the importance of incorporating multimedia into their books since they are digital books after all. I'd even recommend incorporating all the multimedia tools into your project assessment rubric. And you can also get this rubric as well as a digital book planner in the video description. My fourth creativity project is a podcast project. And my favorite program for podcasting with students is Soundtrap. Soundtrap offers a 30 day free trial, which should be plenty of time for you to be able to do a podcast project with your students. There's also a promo in the video description that will give you access to a 90 day trial. The key to a successful podcast project is all about preparation and planning. First, you'll want students to decide on a topic, and then they can do some additional research to bolster their knowledge, and then you can have them decide whether or not it makes more sense to have them do a monologue or conduct an interview. For both choices, you'll want to have students plan out everything ahead of their recordings. And there are some excellent resources out there for this, like KQED's How to Write a Perspective Guide. If students are going to be doing interviews, you might want to have them get the app version of Soundtrap so that they can actually record those interviews directly on their phones rather than trying to use the desktop version. Soundtrap also has a collaboration feature so students can record together even if they're not physically in the same room. Once students have their podcast prepared, recording in Soundtrap is easy. They pretty much just have to hit record. And after they're done, Soundtrap has some cool features like the ability to transcribe the audio file and then edit the audio directly in the transcription. So if there's a part students want to remove, they can just delete the words and that will delete the actual audio. Wait, Soundtrap, can you please make a video editor too? And since Soundtrap is also a music making platform, students can also add sound effects and musical loops to create a podcast interlude. Once students are finished, you can download the audio files and upload them somewhere else like a class website so that the rest of the class and even potentially the rest of the school or others in the community can listen to the podcast that students created. And yes, I also have a full tutorial about how to do a podcast project using Soundtrap as well as a full lesson plan template that you can take and use. The fifth idea is to have students make a paper project or a diorama, really anything that's not involving technology, and then have them use Seesaw to take a video of the project or take images of the project. Seesaw is basically a multimedia layering tool. So after students have captured their work, you can have them annotate on top of it using the drawing tool and mark it up to explain what their work shows. This works for any type of media. So let's say that a student took a picture of a poster and then wanted to add a video on top of that picture of their poster explaining what it means, they could do that too. There's a link in the video description to a tutorial about Seesaw if you wanna learn more about how to use it. And by the way, if you're getting value out of this video, be sure to hit the like button. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What's your favorite creativity project to do with students? The sixth idea is to have students make a web page project using Adobe Spark Post. Web page projects are an ideal way to have students showcase a summary of what they've learned over the course of the entire year. You might also have students design a web page to make an argument, to present information that they've learned, or to create a digital newsletter or blog. Students don't need to know how to code. They can just add elements to their web pages directly, like images, text, and videos. And then they can easily change the theme and colors to create a more customized look. You can see in this example of a web page presentation I made with SparkPost how clean and professional it looks, even though it didn't take me a ton of time to create. And yes, I also have a longer tutorial that I've put in the video description about how to do web page projects with Adobe SparkPost. My second idea was to do a beginner video project, and the seventh idea is to do a more advanced video project. An ideal tool to use in your classroom to make the step up to more advanced video editing is WeVideo. WeVideo is web-based, so it doesn't require you to download and install the software, and students can use it on Chromebooks. One of my favorite ways to use WeVideo is to have students make skit projects. Since students can collaborate together on making a video in WeVideo, they don't even necessarily have to be together to make a skit. They just need to upload their individual video files to WeVideo. In addition to uploading their own files, they can also add video clips from the stock library in WeVideo, as well as customizable transitions, text, and audio. 
Although WeVideo is a much more advanced video editor than the one I showed in Canva, its layering system is still intuitive and easy to get the hang of. Another plus for WeVideo is that it has a chroma key feature, so you can also use it to make green screen videos, which will allow students to swap in different backgrounds and make their skits look more realistic. WeVideo does offer a free 30-day trial period, so that should be enough to get you through a project and see if you like it, and then after that, you do have to pay to use WeVideo. The eighth idea is to have students make a design project in Tinkercad. In Tinkercad, students can create three-dimensional designs, so you can use it for projects like having students design solutions to real-world problems, like, say, creating their own inventions, or you could use it as a modification of a more traditional model or diorama type project. In a makerspace class I currently co-teach, students designed a model community center and also designed objects that would go inside of that community center. And then we printed those objects out with a 3D printer and actually gifted the model community center to the real community center. So that was pretty cool. The ninth project is to have students make digital maps. And you might not know this, but a program that you can use to make awesome digital maps is Padlet. To make a map, students will need to sign up for free Padlet accounts and then choose the map board. There, they'll see that there are some different map styles that they can choose from. Once your students have picked a map style, they can create new posts based on specific locations on the map. Students can either drop pins on the map or they can search for a specific location that they're looking for. As an example, if you were doing a history project where students were tracking important locations along the Silk Road, students could search for those locations and then write a description about why each place was important. Then students can continue to add new pins on their map, and in addition to text, they could also bring another picture in as a way to supplement what they're trying to show in the post. Once students have created more than one pin, they can connect the pins together to show the relationship between places. So here you can envision how a student could create an entire map with all the important locations of the Silk Road and then string them all together to indicate the trajectory of the trade route. I put a link in the video description for my how to use Padlet for students video if you want to do a project like this and need to show students how to create accounts and how to use the basic features of Padlet. All right, my 10th and final creative project idea for you in this video is to have students make augmented reality or virtual reality using CoSpaces EDU. CoSpaces uses drag and drop coding that's similar to Scratch. And on their website, you'll find lots of ideas for how you could integrate AR and VR design into different subject area classes. For example, you can see on this video that they've posted on their YouTube channel, some examples of different virtual exhibitions that students designed as a way to show what they learned about a topic. Students can also design simulations and test experiments in CoSpaces so it would also be a great choice for a creative digital project to do in your science class. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you're looking for full tutorials about most of the programs that I showed in this video, then be sure to check out that playlist above. You can also get access to all the graphic organizers and resources that I referenced in this video and more by signing up for my weekly newsletter. And if you want to learn everything you need to know about how to teach with technology, then be sure to check out my online course, The 21st Century Classroom. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.